Hey guys, this is Care Through the Tape, and today you join me for episode 12 of Solar Civilization. And today we're going to start off by heading out to the moon again, but this time we're sending a little temporary base. Um, it's, uh, well, you'll see it in a minute when I drop the fairing. Uh, it's basically uh, just a science lab that'll land on the base, and then I'll send the men out later. Um, so that they can go and do some work on the base. But before I talk about that more, um, this launch vehicle, slightly updated of my Triton 1.1, this is the Triton 1.2, and it has more of the fuel on the bottom stage and less on the top stage, so it lifts about the same amount, but it means the, f t uh, the first stage goes a little further, um, so it'll have a greater effort to be reused, which you will see in a second. But now you can see the moon base. Um, basically it lands on its side and looks quite nicely and base-like. It doesn't take too much fuel, it basically brings as little as possible. Um, uh, but yeah, so that'll land first and then in the next launch I'll send uh, a few guys out and they'll spend a little time on the surface of the moon to uh, kind of do research on what it's like to actually uh, live on the moon for a small period of time and then eventually a long period of time. But anyway, now we're back with the uh, main stage and I'm just going to ignite the engines and push my uh, <coughs> orbit round a little bit so that it goes past that continent so that hopefully we'll come down on the continent because uh, in previous attempts I've come I've come in short but now there's more fuel on this stage so it goes a little higher and can come back a little further so hopefully it will land on that land and it again there's parachute set up so now we are completely out of fuel hopefully one day I'll be able to complete uh, to eliminate parachutes because they often burn off um, and c and just land completely on propulsion because mainly that looks cooler and um, but yeah but right now we're using parachutes and this is our first thing that's actually looking good coming back for land it started to ignite but everything's good trying to keep the parachutes from burning off like last time that was kind of a problem um, but there they go parachute deploy is good that's looking nice uh, the fuel is all fine I'm just switching out some of the parachutes that they'll open earlier so it's less likely to tear this apart Deploy the landing legs, that's good. That's uh, the next phase. It's starting to look good. We're back into one times time at right now. There's the first parachutes. That's a good deploy. And the second ones. It's looking pretty good. This has been a pretty damn good uh, mission so far. Um, <coughs> yeah, so we're coming down at about 12.2 meters a second. It'll slow down a little more. But it's still coming down quite hard. And even though it looks quite graceful now, it will look a little more you know worrying near the ground but those landing legs are pretty hardy and uh, one of the great things is they don't like shear off anymore they just break so they can cushion your fall quite well um, but yeah it's looking quite nice um, pretty close to the ground the engineers really going crazy right now and that's down and it's looking good it looks like I may have broken a couple of landing legs but that is a stage back from orbit that is the first step to fully reusing rockets. Uh, yeah, these look not too broken, um, but maybe a bit. But that's the whole stage back. That is the first time we've done that. But anyway, back in orbit. Um, we need to head out to the moon, and I've done a little bit of the burn with that stage. But when I ignite this engine, it's very unstable. I have no, I have pretty much no torque other than the one in that, uh, that um, the probe. So. I try to ignite the gimbal, or the, the engine more, so I can use the gimbal, but it just throws me into a flat spin because there's no torque authority, and it is unbalanced. Um, so this isn't great. Um, it's going to be very hard to get this to the moon. I'm sure it would fly fine without this stage, but right now it's kind of not looking great. So we might have to try and develop something a little better. Um, which will do this episode because I really want to put a little base on the moon I want to start doing that sort of thing so I deorbit this watch it explode and feel very happy with myself that it's dead for all the pain it put me through of spinning out uh, I try to ignite the engine not really to slow myself down to try and heat it up and explode but it just slows me down more than you know anything else but uh, it's looking uh, pretty fiery, I do like the effects there, and the explosions make it look damn good, there goes something else, who knows what it was, um, there were no men aboard obviously, so uh, it's fine, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's a pretty expensive piece of kit that we're deorbiting, but uh, the engineers weren't too uh, upset, because we just reused the first stage of a rocket, I mean that's like 70% cheaper, so that's, we basically got this for free, so we felt that we could deorbit it. 
um, without feeling too bad. There are no shoots on it, obviously. So it will just be coming down and smashing into the ground. Um, the engine will just throw it into a spin, but I might as well try and ignite it anyway at some point. Yeah, coming back with the Mac effects. Um, <laughs> does look pretty nice, actually, those Mac effects. Uh, well, yeah, they're still going. Those do look good. But anyway, ignite the engine, try and slow it down a bit, but uh, this is consigned to death. We're fine. We can send another one. There's tons of money in the space agency right now. But it hits the ground nonetheless. But a droidal tank survives and then, you know, hits the ground and dies. But, you know, a landing leg survives and then, you know, hits the ground and dies. So, not great. But anyway, on to something else. This is uh, a collaboration of the Kerbal Space Program and the military, the Kerbal military, um, je uh, to, to work on like fighter craft I guess. You can see those little circular things on the wings, those are missiles that the military have developed. This is my uh, Mockingbird Mark I craft which has been flown before for science but now it has some light missiles on it. They're just a couple of decouplers with Cybertrons on them but they look quite nice. I thought they did anyway. They're quite a effective way to put light missiles on things and obviously the military giving us funding especially and we're going to need all we can get after having to deorbit that uh, last uh, <clears throat> that last mission to the moon, but um, but yeah, we I mean reusing rockets. I mean you know we don't need too much money, but it's nice to let the uh, military have a look at our technology and maybe if there's ever a lot when when the civilization gets quite large in space, maybe there'll need to be a bit of uh, policing. Yes, policing. Oh, there go the missiles. <laughs> we'll just forget the ominous tone. And there go the missiles, that look pretty good, and then a quick spin. Filling Kerman, of course, our only astronaut in the complex right now. Um, there are The others are either on station or heading out to Juno. But uh, before this lands, I thought um, it would probably be best to take a little bit of science, because I haven't actually done a huge amount of science flying over um, Kerman shores. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we take a little, uh, little bit of science to add to the... Uh, you know, this would be very success. Well, add to the success of the flight. I mean, a bit of science that's always nice. And the military missiles—they're very happy about that. You know, but anyway, we'll skip ahead and come in for a landing. Uh, this looking nice. I've landed this plane before, and I've landed planes of the like a million times, so it should be fine. Filling Kerman, kind of becoming a bit of a veteran now. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll be the commander heading out to the moon. Um, yeah. Well, the only. Uh, Oh, and I believe it was Filling who landed that plane disaster maybe last episode or a couple of episodes ago, the high-altitude plane which tore apart coming back, um, but landed it with uh, just a couple of those little wings at the front. Pretty uh, pretty good. Um, we've only ever lost one pilot slash astronaut, which was Kirk Kerman. He never got to go to space, but we, he will be remembered. Anyway, that's uh, slowing down and landing. Try not to break the plane, Filling. The military would be very angry. This is their little plane they're testing with, so you know. Um, <coughs> yeah, bit of a cough. But anyway, this is my new design for the moon base. It has a little more fuel. It's got an SAS unit, and it's just generally more balanced. Um, I'm not sure if I prefer it to the other one, but it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, you know, and it uses smaller landing legs, so it's you know more mass efficient. So that's always good. Anyway, I'm going to use the Translotron to test out flying it, because it makes me feel like I'm uh, being all professional or something stupid. But uh, there you go. It's uh, flying quite well. I had a few problems with uh, the Translotron on the runway, but it's looking pretty good now. Um, I do like to fly things myself often, uh, but I quite like the Translotron. It's just quite a nice little tool for doing stuff like this. And it hovers pretty well. Those engines aren't brilliantly efficient, but they have a pretty nice thrust to mass ratio, and this isn't going to be returning, it just to land on the um, launch pad, and it doesn't matter too much about uh, uh, too much about mass these days, I mean, we've got a pretty good launch vehicle that's pretty reusable, so, you know, it's looking, it's looking good, so if we can keep that being reusable, then uh, everything will be fine. But anyway, we'll punch in the final command and land softly on the launch pad, with quite a bit of fuel to spare, so that's nice. And that's us down. And then I decide, eh, screw the computers, I can do this myself. We have a little fuel left, let's uh, take up for a little flight. So igniting the engines and just seeing what I can do with it. Uh, I used one of those uh, 
KW adapters on top because it looks quite nice. It has 51 days life support for two Kerbals, so that's pretty good. And it's very controllable as you can see here, just slow it down very nicely. But anyway, let's launch this to the moon. This time there will be no mistakes. Um, this launch vehicle is just... sounded like there was something on my window. Uh, anyway, this launch vehicle is just a weird noise in the back of my room, it was creepy. Anyway, uh, this launch vehicle is the same as the last one, except it has six parachutes because then it might lot sa lo There wasn't even words. Land a little softer, I got soft and land confused. And uh, this is actually goes as a pretty nice launch because um, often my I get kind of skew with orbits because I'm uh, trying to go back to the uh, first stage as quickly as possible. But this goes quite well and um, I get it into a pretty nice orbit. So, you know, I want to, you know, balance reusing rockets and getting into good orbits. Because if I'm right at the kind of top end of my payload limit, I'm not going to want to have to... Um, I, I don't want to have to... Yeah, you know, I can't put it in a skew if orbit. It has to go into the right orbit or there won't be any fuel left over to change the orbit. Because if it's at the, pa um, the mass limit, then I won't have extra fuel. So, you know, I want to get it into a good orbit and reuse the rocket, not one or the other. But, you know, that went pretty nicely. Um, but anyway, now we'll do the same thing we just did. Uh, burn our engines. We actually get even better that time. We, um, we're we going to land more inland than on the beach. Because it was actually a pretty close call last time. We almost landed in the ocean. But we flip round. We have lots of uh, torque control with that SES unit. Um, we've got our surface information open. Uh, and now, now we're coming down pretty... Uh, Really nice, looking uh, looking pretty good actually. It's um, burning up again. We do lose a parachute, and then another parachute, then another parachute. So we've lost three of our six parachutes. So now we're landing on three parachutes as opposed to the six I'd planned. And last time we landed on four. So now it's looking a little hazy. So I switch out a few of those things. So one of them opens quite a bit later than the other two. But it slows down all right. And we've got another one to open, and there it goes. And we're going 14 meters a second, and that's quite fast considering the landing. And this is still four, uh, four times time accelerate, but lands quite nicely. It does fall, o fall around a bit, and the landing legs kind of get damaged, but that was pretty good. We reused another stage. It's, it's going well for us. But anyway, now we're uh, in the dark. Sorry about that, as always. Um, we're going to burn out to the moon, and you notice how it's not flipping around and annoying me? Yeah. Uh have started to notice I've got quite a lot of probes that were like either the um, ascent stages of rockets or like just probes I've left in orbit. They're kind of there, so I'm either gonna. Some of them can be deorbited um, if I just go in by themselves, and some of them I might just get a grabber arm and go and pull them out of orbit or something because they're kind of annoying me. But anyway, now we're at the moon, and you could just see on the map, not now, but you could just then. Mooning, the moon's starting to look a little like a basketball. See, there you go with the uh, keythane scanning on it quite a bit of keythane around the equator which is where I want to put my uh, keythane mining base because um well because it's easier to get to the equator because if it's on the poles it's a little more delta v and there's you know it's quite a lot of nice places on the equator um for a while I left it in a bit of an eccentric orbit because I was thinking I might need to change my inclination um to bring myself in for a landing somewhere off the equator but then I decide that there's an there's a crater on the equator um, on the dark side of the planet, so I'll uh, land there when when it comes round. So I leave it in an equatorial orbit, you know, a low equatorial orbit. But anyway, I'll wait for that to occur, the crater I want to come, well, the crater I want to land in to come into the uh, light side uh, in the daytime of the moon. And now we've got to change the uh, inclination of the um, Jewel Explorer. That's what the alarm clock was going off, and that's what you've just been seeing. Um, I did a quick test burn there, and it's going to be a six-second burn. It's a fairly, uh, it's, well, it was in total about 200 meters a second delta V. Um, and we've got an unknown object, i.e. an asteroid there, which is uh, quite near the orbit of Duna, weirdly enough. But anyway, we ignite our engines, and uh, we burn down, and then I start turning, and then shut off the engine, so, it's gi so it was gimbling and pushed me off, and then I couldn't do anything. But anyway, I've cut ahead to when I burn prograde, and almost get my encounter because that fine tune wasn't quite perfect for some reason. But um, so I do a quick burn prograde as you just kind of saw, but it was uh, a bit jittery. So now I need to burn um, at the normal relative to my orbit. So basically upwards, as you can see now. Um, 
to pull it in a little more. I'm ma making little burns, um, and it's not make having much difference. So maybe I should plan it and uh, see what uh, see what goes. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be about thirty meters a second if I remember correctly. No maneuver, not set Duna as target. That's the other spacecraft heading for there. So I uh, pull the normal mode a little bit, and it's going to be about a thirty meters per sec. Yeah, it's going to be about a thirty seven meters per second burn to get it to where I want it to be. But there you go, that's an encounter. That's quite nice. Um, so we'll focus on Jewel and just try and bring this in, bring it in good and low. Um, yeah, there you go. Let's uh, just need to keep burning normal. Or maybe prograde would actually be quite good because uh, hmm, I should probably check that again. I often just kind of eyeball it, but when I'm this far away from the planet, I kind of need to plan it a bit. Um, <laughs> planet and far away from the planet. Uh -huh, I'm so funny. Yeah, so a prograde burn, as you could see there, was uh, probably the best thing to do. Um, I want to skim through the atmosphere because I want to do high altitude science, low altitude science, and atmosphere science, and maybe flick around one of the moons if I have enough fuel, and maybe just get a bit of uh, atmosphere science and temperature science and that sort of thing. And that'd be quite nice. Um, maybe Lays because it'd be a nice place to have a base considering it has an oxygen atmosphere and water. And what I'm seeing now is I've left it kind of in map view, um, so if you want to see what's going on, probably focus on the nav ball very slow rotation because uh didn't have any additional reaction wheels because at the time this was launched which was uh quite a while ago relative to the you know space program um we had quite a few mass constraints and i only had one launch because i was assembling my duna spacecraft which is on its way to duna um and i also have the sun diver as you can see in the kerbal alarm clock in three days we'll be uh dropping down near the orbit of the sun it actually already has i just missed it um so that was smart of me, but uh, you know, um, I will be catching it on the next run, that's why I've set an alarm clock, and uh, taking a look at some of the sites down low near the sun, we're getting uh, quite a lot of stuff explored now, oh, and you can see there, um, as I fly past, if I don't change anything, um, it'll fly into really deep space, it'll take 14 years to get there, and it's 530 billion meters above the sun, well, 520 billion meters, but uh, I was pretty impressed with that. That'd be quite a quite interesting. I doubt there's any um, more science that high up, and I reckon uh, our space program will be pretty far ahead. But in 14 years, I'm hoping. But anyway, um, that is that. That is the fine tune done. Um, we'll be landing the moon base in the next episode. Uh, so yeah, this has been Chaos People Tape. I'll see you next time.